Welcome to Wild of the World and you're still joining me on this epic adventure in Southern Africa. And today in this episode we visit one of the true highlights in Namibia. We're going for a safari in Etosha National Park. So welcome to Namibia. And just as impressive as the nature in this episode is the way that we got here. Through the desert and with some incredible stops, we drove up north along the west coast. And we start this amazing episode in the middle of the Namibian desert, on the campsite where we slept last night. Uh, when we crossed the border from South Africa, we first went to Sossesvlei. And from there we went up the coast, cruising the so-called Skeleton Coast in Swakopmund. And we saw the seals over there. Uh, we also saw some shipwrecks, visited the aquarium. And now we went more into the land, uh, in the middle of the desert. And this is where we slept. As you can see, you have these houses where you can park your vehicle with your rooftop tents and you have your own bathroom and your own toilet. So that's amazing about Namibia. And we're now halfway on our way to Etosha for the safari. So let's go guys. And we still love camping with the Brits 4x4 sleeper. We got everything with us and sleep under the African sky full of stars. By the way, this is a tiny town called Uis, and we're on a campsite called Cactus and Coffee Tea Garden. With a kitchen and a bathroom included, we only pay about 25 bucks a night. Wow, guys, when we're driving these dirt roads towards Etosha and the Safari Park, uh, we see so many traditional African villages uh, with these little huts and where the people are barely naked wearing traditional African clothes. <laughs> this is Africa. These people live so remote that they are super happy with some food or water. But unfortunately, it can also be a little bit dangerous to stop out here. So you think you have had all the bad luck already? Then we got a flat tire. But we are lucky, because only one car actually passes by and this gentleman has some experience. Ta-da! Good as new. In total, we drove about six hours from the coast through no man's land to arrive at the safari area of Itosha. And we can't believe our eyes when we see what we booked.
So it took us a little bit more time to get to Itosha National Park because we had to change a tire on the way. A little bit of bad luck, but this behind me is certainly no bad luck. We booked a room for a change at a luxurious lodge called Toshari Lodge on our camping trip. I'll show you the room and we also have a super nice pool and a great dinner buffet in the evening. This is gonna be one great safari. Of course, this cost something. We pay about 150 euros a night here, but we are in the very best spot near the entrance gate of the safari park. And I have to say, it's well worth the price. Check it out. Kind of bizarre guys, but all the animals that you see inside the safari park, well, you can eat them here in the restaurant, like a springbok or a, a wild beast steak or a kudu. Yeah. Yeah, I stick to my pea soup right now, but maybe later. Oh, good morning guys, the sun is up here in Etosha National Park, it's still early, we're gonna have some breakfast and then it's time for the first game drive. We're going on safari. We're gonna look for four of the big five because they have lions, rhinos, elephants and leopards over here. They don't have the buffalo, so that's a shame, but we're gonna look for the rest. Let's go. From our lodge it's about a 25 minute drive towards the gates of Etosha National Park and there's one fuel station in the middle and I suggest to use that fuel station and gas up the car fully because you don't want to get stuck <laughs> between the lions and go there with your jerry can all the way back and I don't think you're gonna make that. Itosha National Park was founded in 1907 and this makes it more than a hundred years old. Inside is a big salt flat surrounded by bushland and it's one of the biggest nature parks in all of southern Africa. If all goes well we're gonna see a lot of different animals inside so let's go in and find out why this is a place that you cannot skip when you're traveling around in Namibia. Every time that you begin your safari for the first time at one of the parks, uh, it's always exciting which animal you're gonna see first. It's gonna be a lion, it's gonna be an elephant, and in this case it was the ostrich. No, it's not too bad. Soon we also see many of these lilac-breasted rollers. These birds are just flying works of art. When you're driving in Itosha in the summer, it's freaking hot. So the animals uh, will all gather at the water holes. This is your best chance to see them. Uh, so on our way to the first water hole, we already saw a lonely giraffe right outside here. Despite the heat, we see a lot of animals in February because they are constantly looking for food and drinking water. And that, of course, also attracts the predators. We see a lot of Cape ground squirrels. And they got some huge nuts. We also see springboks and many birds like the crowned lapwing. And 
this pale chanting goshawk. We also see a lot of these black-faced impalas, and that's actually why I chose this dramatic music. We get to witness a duel between two young males. From the other side, a group of kudus is also enjoying the fight. Unfortunately, this beautiful antelope species is often on the menu in Namibia. It's always kind of funny in the safari parks that in the zoo you have the animals in the cages but over here when you want to go to a picnic site or to the toilets you have to go inside the cage. So we're in the cage and the animals are outside. <laughs> The next animal that we encounter in large numbers is the zebra. Awesome! They sometimes run past in groups of up to 50. We have already spotted many birds of prey, such as this lesser kestrel. But I think it's about time we find some larger predators. So we're cruising the park now for a couple of hours and it's 1 p.m. Uh, outside it's freaking hot. What's it now? 37 degrees. 37 Celsius. So yeah, if I were a lion, I would go swimming in one of those water holes, but we haven't seen any at the water holes yet. We've seen a lot of things like antelopes, birds, but yeah, we're waiting for the big five and for the predators. So let's keep looking guys. Seeing thousands of Abdim storks and also this Cory Bustard. The Big Five is actually closer than we think. So we're looking at all the pretty birds over there. I was counting them, I think. But then in the back, I suddenly see a way bigger animal. A rhino! Yes, a rhino. <laughs> We even see several and they come very close. The rhino is seriously endangered because they are hunted a lot. That makes our meeting even more special. Second one of the big five guys, the elephant. Oh my God guys, we just stopped at one of the campsites called Halali 
and we went in the shop to get some ice cream or souvenir. And outside was a hornbill, the one like in The Lion King called Zazu, and it was eating a butterfly. It was attacking it like that. Awesome. <laughs> Even during our lunch break we see squirrels and a lot of different birds. This here is the violet wooded hoopoe and the grey lorry. There are animals everywhere we look. We even see mongooses and different species of hornbills. And this right here is the southern black corhan. And a beautiful grey kite. And then suddenly, cheetahs. Finally it's time for the predators because we also see a lot of lions. Wow guys, we saw so many animals already today, but it's time for the final destination of today, uh, which will be at Ocalquejo, a very difficult name for the campsite that has one lost waterhole, where we are supposed to be able to spot rhinos and elephants, if we are lucky. Too bad, for now it's only zebras. But when the sun goes down in Africa, anything can happen. Oh my god guys, I was a bit disappointed because of the last waterhole I wanted to see a rhino and we didn't. So on the way back I said to Suus, I'm sure we're gonna see one more rhino, I'm sure. And just before the gates, we saw this big rhino right next to the car. We dine in African style, thanks to the musical hotel staff. Good morning guys, the sun is up here at the lodge and we all had a good night's rest. Although I must say I was still looking for animals in my dreams, I had a crazy safari space night. Nevertheless, we're looking forward to the second day here in Etosha and look for more animals, let's go. Guys, I just can't get over it. We see so many animals in Etosha. Here are some Namaqua doves. And 
this right here is the marabou. Today we make one of the northern routes in the park and we drive just along the southern rim of the biggest salt flat in the middle of Etosha. As you can see behind me, this stretches on for miles. And this is also a place where you can see cheetahs, where they can reach high speeds when they catch their prey. So I'm going back into the car. <coughs> A large group of wildebeest emerges in the woods, and they seem to have young ones. How awesome! So we've been following the signs that say toilet for about half an hour. Uh, it's like a picnic site where you can go to the bathroom. And we found it, and this is the toilet. We stopped immediately because we saw a bunch of elephants. It's a whole family. I think it's maybe 15 and they have little ones. The last animal that I want to show you is the red hartebeest, and then we drive out of the park. That's it guys for today's episode, and we end the Etosha Safari in style, at a local restaurant called KFC, African Fried Chicken. Stay tuned because next time we take a tiny border crossing into Botswana. I promise it will be an adventurous episode with a lot of ups and downs. So subscribe for even more adventure and of course the continuing search for the leopard. Ciao!